be God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Christ. and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together Psalm 116, found in the insert. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has treated me well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my mind from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Our second reading is from the book of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, Though they are so large, 
that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of inequity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and breakish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives and a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and to forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. They were, <coughs> excuse me, they were just living. They were just living when life was brutally disrupted and nothing would ever be the same. 
a life gone, a love stolen. Twenty years ago, this nation struggled with unspeakable grief. The grief of so many individuals, so many families, occupied all our minds. On September 11, two decades ago, the American people were assaulted by the reminder of the uncertainty of this life, the fragility of all we so much cherish and treasure. They were just living, coming and going, when? A writer in the New Yorker wrote, Is there anyone who hasn't played out the nightmare of having been trapped in one of the towers? Is there anyone who hasn't wondered if he would have had the superhuman composure to call and comfort a loved one. Dozens of phone calls home were placed from the towers between the moment the first plane hit and the time the North Tower collapsed. When words should have been most impossible to find, there were words of grace and dignity and consolation. Words of fear and words of love. The terrorist attacks revealed humanity at its worst, the reality of evil. But we came to see humanity at its best as we watched and learned of the courage and compassion of so many people in the face of massive death and tragedy. In stairway A of the South Tower, a stranger tore a strip from his shirt to stop the bleeding of Keating Crown, who had been wounded by the second plane and was hobbling down 78 flights of stairs on a broken leg. A few floors below, Nat Alcamo, a Marine turned banker, saw high heeled shoes that had been kicked into the corners of the stairway landings. And much later, a woman by the name of Teresa, when she got home to the Bronx that night, she found an empty plastic cup in her bag that had been handed to her hours earlier, filled with water by some unknown, unremembered face on the Bowery, 
who saw her trudging north and knew she was thirsty. Between 14,000 and 17,000 people in the towers marshaled themselves into evacuations that were undirected and orderly, reaching out a hand to support one another, making way for the most needy, offering encouragement. They saved a day as one reporter recorded that could have been defined only by hate from the sky. They saved a day instead of by the communal decency that resisted panic and prevailed in the name of civilization. On that day, there were an endless number of sacrificial acts offered by everyday heroes, not only in New York, but in Washington, D.C., and over Shanksville. In the days that followed, they were joined by many others who volunteered in the relief effort from across this country. I am reminded of Tom Winslow then an archdeacon in this diocese, a chaplain to the local FBI bureau in Milwaukee, who went to New York to help with the relief efforts, contracted afterward a respiratory disease. He had to have a lung replacement. He later died from what he had incurred at ground zero. Some years ago, Vaclav Havel, the Czech playwright, reflected, I am not interested in why man commits evil. I want to know why he does good here and there, or at least feels he ought to. It seems to me that even when no one is watching, and even when he is certain no one will ever find out about his behavior, there is something in man that compels him to behave to a degree at least as though someone were constantly observing him. I am not interested in why man commits evil. I want to know why he does good. All of us enter this life bearing something of God within us. 
we carry a divine imprint. And this imprint is the most essential part of who we are. It is a source of wisdom and courage and generosity we can draw upon if we choose. Scripture reminds us we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. On this 20th remembrance of September 11th, let us commemorate the spirit that once brought forth our better selves and united us in common purpose as a people. Let us not forget that the events 20 years ago were not an attack on America only, but on the world. Citizens from more than 50 countries were among those who perished alongside our fellow Americans. Let us pray. O God of compassion, whose loving care extends to all the world, we remember this day your children of many nations and many faiths whose lives were cut short by the fierce flames of anger and hatred. Console those who continue to suffer and grieve and give them comfort and hope as they look to the future. Out of what we have endured, give us the grace to examine our relationship with those who perceive us as the enemy and show our leaders the way to use our power to serve the good of all for the healing of the nations. This we ask in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from heaven, light from light, true God, true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. 
He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll be doing form four of the prayers of the people this Sunday. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless all those, all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this Sunday, we pray for the upcoming week. Prayers for our church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff, our bishop, Sandy and Becky, our wardens, Jessica, Phil, Connie, Jim, Deanna, and Pat, our vestry and clerk. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Tanzania, for our diocesan cycle, we pray for Holy Cross, Wisconsin Dells. And in our community, all the Burlington area churches, Love Incorporated, the Transitional Living Center, the Women's Resource Center, and the Diocesan Hospitality Center. For those suffering from war, natural disasters, or the economic crises in our world. For those who are our enemies. For those in the armed forces, and especially those deployed. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Ken and Christine and for Linda. For those celebrating birthdays, Phil Hine. For those celebrating an anniversary, preparing for the birth of a child, celebrating the birth of a child, preparing for baptism, and those prefer preparing for marriage. For those who are in need, we pray for Eileen, John, Jane, Don and Marion, Marilyn, Betty, Birgit, Mary, Marilyn, Pidge, Ken, Lana, Estelle, Joanne Skidmore, David Toretta, and Jimmy and Tommy Annie. We pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those suffering from natural disasters, domestic and foreign violence, and the pandemic and its effects. Let us pray for nations and peoples as they strive to be better and to do better. Amen. As followers of Jesus and with our siblings and other faith traditions, we place great value on the act of remembrance. As we reflect on the solemn anniversary of September 11th, 2001, we remember many loved ones lost and first responders who put their lives at risk, modeling the sacrificial love of Jesus who said, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Lord, embrace those who lost their lives that day and the days that have followed. Be with, help, and guide those who suffer because of that day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. 
regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. That, that we may lie on your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 
holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died, Christ is, is risen, Christ will come, come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food of drink and new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world 
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.